here we go. This is my application, Echo, the LM coach. What's different here is I am going to use my old Llama. If you click this one, now it's loading Llama 3.2 to old Llama, and now it's served, right? I want to become awesome um, AI developer using Lang Graph. The core of Lang Chain is that you are going to define your LM. You are going to use templates. And last but not least, if you ha don't have memory, you cannot have a conversation. Don't forget to give us likes, leave your comments, share us to your friends, and also subscribe to our channels. We have YouTube, LinkedIn, TikTok, and Facebook. Sure um, framework that actually makes the LLM app for you. I will actually recommend you guys start looking into LangChain and LangGraph. To be honest, over the past few years, it's been just so many um, tools um, uh, out there. It's just mess and chaos out there. But now I think I, it's it's getting um, to consolidate to what tools that people should use. And in my opinion, LangChain and LangGraph are actually one of a strong propositions to use um, in terms of Python programming as well um, uh, to start building your LLM application. So yeah, it, um, it's getting started very messy with just one component, the Lang chain, but with many problems that now it encountered, it had expanded into other uh, framework as well. Lang graph allow you to actually create um, agents. We are not going to talk about agents today. I will have a dedicated session to talk about building agents application, but everything is based on a solid understanding of Lang graph and Lang, um, Lang chain and Lang graph. Um, and they also come up with production grade tools like LangSmith, which allows you to actually monitor, test. So this is actually like full features about uh, testing and monitoring and going to production. Um, LangGraph is an extension of uh, LangGraph platform is an extension of the LangGraph. Um, so if you want to uh, develop your agent based, um, very complicated system, I think you should go with the LangGraph platform. But this is a commercial level. They are gracious enough to provide us with free tools um, like LangChain and LangGraph, for example. All right. Um, so it's going to be the basics today. Um, the core of LangChain is that you are going to define your LM. You are going to use templates because um, you want your application to be flexible, right? You want to be able to inject new information when you serve this customer. And um, you, when you serve another customer, you want to inject their, that particular customer's information to your system. So the template um, is important. And last but not least, if you ha don't have memory, you cannot have a conversation. So we are going to actually touch a little bit upon LLM def um, definition, uh, templates, and memory. Um, now, in terms of the turns of conversations, there are right now two main types. The first one is very straightforward. Human message, uh, AI knows what to respond and reply back. And then the human um, uh start a new message again and the AI replies. On the second one, it involves tools. This is a little bit getting into agents now. Agents are an AI that um, we provide tools for it to do something um, like calculate this for me. So that AI is going to call a tool, a calculator tool. And once it gets an answer from a calculator, it will um, then provide the final response to a human. So this is the second type right now um, uh, that we know uh, most of the time. All right, now let's get a little bit hands on. So let me bring my code right up here. So by the way, this is going to be on my GitHub repo and you will be able to access it. Actually, it's actually in there right now. So you can go to GitHub, Case done, and um, this repo is a lang chain first step. All right, so let me get started quickly with a uh, overview of how lang chain works in this Jupyter notebook. Scroll up to the top. Here we go. Uh, let me clear everything. Selecting a kernel. 
this one i think so all right um okay you are going to load up everything as um, necessary i provide sometimes i will use open ai api key because um if i want to use like gpt 40 or 40 mini uh, which has i think more uh brain power than the llama 3.2 free version i would just keep my open ai key inside a file and un under a folder called secret and then i will load it up so yeah i'm loading my open api key right now and um so right now chat open ai is from lang chain right so this is going to create an instance that communicates to open ai server and we are going to specify it to use GPT-4 mini. So defining a model is as simple as um, provide a model and provide an API key. This is for OpenAI, for example. So yeah, right now I have a link to open, uh, OpenAI API server. And now you see the message, the outline application is simple, right? You see the message. Um, if I go back, this is an OpenAI message. You have messages are a list of message each of them has a role in it now this one is role system this not this one is role user it's similar in langchain as well you provide a list of messages um, this is a system message i just tell them to be a parrot and this is a human message a human message actually say hi so this list get passed to a model right in a similar manner um, to this one, we are providing lists of messages and send it off to OpenAI server and compute back. So let's see what the response will look like. Now I have got my response back and this is what the AI from OpenAI um, server say, Ahoy, there may be what be your, uh, can't even read pirate stuff. But anyway, it's correct. Um, this setting is correct. And if you want to dive a little bit deeper, you can do dot dict. You will see what the response um, object has. You have content, you have token count. So you can actually implement your own custom way of collecting how many tokens you have been used for this application or chat. Um, this is an another one that has token counts here. By the way, we are going to get a little bit fast today not my usual pace because we have i have like many tools that i want to cover for you all right so next one is a prompt template you can call a chat prompt template this tool this um class is actually for preparing a template for chat you have a system prompt at the top and you have body of um, conversation between you and ai right so this is the 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 main usage of uh, a template for a chat. So you call it in here. And then uh, for this application, my system prompt is translate the following to English, um, from English to dot, dot, dot language. And now you can see that this one is a placeholder. So we are going to fill in what language it is later on, because right now we are working with the template level. If you execute this one, you have a template. It still has placeholder. It cannot be rendered right now. It cannot be actually sent off to OpenAI because you still have two missing um, placeholders, um, two placeholders that don't have actual values like language and text here. In the same manner, you can use .dict to see inside. And the way to actually fill in the placeholders is actually use this um, method invoke and you use a dictionary to fill in information um, of these placeholders. Now I'm filling in those things and I can see what the actual message looked like. Now this message with filled in information will be like, okay, English to Thai and the actual message is, hello, how are you? Now, because I'm Thai, if I run, I should be able to see if this is correct or not now the response say here so what crap it means hello how are you so that is correct all right move on so we have covered LLM definition we have covered the template now the last thing that you need to actually make a conversational chatbot 
is the memory. That's an old way of doing this before land graph emerge. The always is actually pretty much this guys, a list of messages. You need to come up with a way to insert, uh, append new informations or new um, text from either an AI or a user into a list. But now this incarnation, a, a new uh, framework, LangGraph, was actually created by the LangChain team. And LangGraph is recommended over an old way. So it LangGraph implement a state machine. So it has an um, underneath mechanism that automatically insert or append new messages to a, um, a conversation as well as um, as you will see um, as well as keeping many messages in parallel anyway so a long story short you import here you need to create a graph now and a graph uh, a graph is con actually consists of nodes compute nodes or uh, conditional nodes they, they are a components of a graph and for each node, you can assign a function. Um, that node can call a function. In this case, whatsoever, there is a node called model. And we are equipping this function to that model node. And pretty much inside this call function, we, as we did before, we are sending messages to a model to compute. So this is how the very simple graph will look like. It will start here and you are going to be with the model forever. You send the message to the model, you get the message uh, back from the model. And this is our graph, just one node, um, and you will keep going on forever. Now, if you recall, I mentioned um, grand, grand land graph implementation of a message stage allow you to actually keep um, many conversations together. And this is done by a thread ID. You will need to pass in a config object into a graph so that it knows what kind of message uh, his uh, chat history stack it needs to pull and um, keep going on our conversation. So all in all, land graph uh, is a better way of handling um, chat history, but because of uh, it's enhanced feature. It comes up with a boilerplate that you need to follow like here. So, all right, let's have a conversation. So I am going to start off with, hey, Ambence, there is only one message in here. And the response I get back from, I think this case in uh, OpenAI server is, hi, Benz, how can I assist you? Now, if I ask a follow-up question of who am I, if the memory works, then it should be able to reply that my name is Ben. All right, this is the response. Yeah, your name is Ben. That's it. So this implementation of memory stack works. Here we go. And if you actually come take a look at output, you can see that there is messages attribute there it actually consists of the message hands off between human and AI. Now we are two turns, so in total of four message items like human message, AI message, human message, and AI message. Same way, if you come to a memory and date, um, you can actually see what's inside and you can then develop your app later. Now, back to what I was mentioning before, chat is a template for chat. And as you can see here, usually we start off with a system message and now you have a placeholder that will need to keep information of the chat, right? So we are going to we are going to create the prompt template. Now we are going to create another graph. Um, here we go. Nothing much here, guys. I'm just um, t uh, showing you how to use chat prompt template. We additionally we implement history in uh, here. That so if you recall in the call function, this guy doesn't have a memory yet, but luckily this uh, message state help us manage the memory. Now it's for the chat prompt template is an enhanced way because it allows you to specify the system message to be like so. Now, if I'm going to show you, it's different from before because I said, okay, the system, you must be a pirate. Then here is the behavior of the system. 
the first message I sent is, um, my name is Pisek from Kirsten, and this is the response from the AI. It's in pirate language. So yeah, the system message here, um, the system message gets implemented correctly with the chat prompt template. Now I am go going to pack everything into an application and I'm actually going to provide you with information about Gradio later, but pretty much here, this is my prompt template. I upgraded from just simply be pirate to a huge one. This one is echoing Actually, I said to AI, you are a, you, your name is Echo. You are AI coach and you will help me going through reflection, personal reflection, yeah, if I may. Um, that's my system prompt template. Now with the boilerplate of LangGraph to implement a system message, as you can see, it's the same as before. I have my application that is ready to be packed into a Gradio language and launch this thing. So now here is my Gradio. So pretty much this is my Gradio guys. Gradio use chat interface, call this function where this chat function actually invokes my application right here. And this, my application has LLM, prompt template and memory. And that's it. The rest is just variables, stacking memory, um, somewhere that I know. So here is my uh, Gradio application launched inside this thing. I can click this and it would jump to a, a browser. But what I want to do is uh, I export everything and craft it everything into a one um, Python file. It's ex ex exactly the same as you saw before. But one little change is that I'm going to be no longer using OpenAI. What's different here is I am going to use my old Llama server on my laptop here. So basically, I'm not using this guy. I import this guy instead and use that. Okay, everything else remains the same. System prompt, uh, boilerplate of land graph up until um, this point and the Gradio interface. So now I should be ready to launch. Um, okay, so the way to launch for me, I switch from using Conrad to poetry to keep handling packages. Okay, here we go. Now this one should be live. Oh, I don't have this one open. Here we go. This is my application, Echo, the LM coach. If you click this one, uh, so now it's loading Llama 3.2 to Olama, and now it's served, right? You are considering consulting with me about a career. What have been on your mind lately? What specific aspects of your career are hoping to explore? I want to become awesome. I developer uh, using Lang Graph. Here we go. Um, the second generation has, is completed very, very quickly. Summary, I hear that you are eager to be a blah, blah, blah to clarify, but can you tell me what specific um, challenges? So um, pretty much it worked um, as I intended for it to be. I'm going to kill that application right now. So yeah, guys, Lang Graph or Lang Chain, it may look intimidating. Yes, is it? I don't think it's that easy. But yeah, if you can, um, I think you can you can master it. Uh, just going to go uh, through a lot of its uh, tutorials on its website, and sometimes it's very unorganized. But yes, um, you, I will recommend you guys going down this rabbit hole, Lang Chain and Lang Graph, if you want to build your LLM application.